Does it happen to you that uh, someone calls your phone and you respond, start talking, and then wonder, why is this person even calling me? Because we have so many alternatives available today and using those alternatives can be much better than not resorting to the uh, convenient to the caller, but lazy option of the old-fashioned voice conversation. The ability to use, take advantage, properly configure, but also upgrade and maintain these options is pretty essential in today's technological world uh, for everyone, not only for a specific uh, class of people, business professionals, for example. Uh, and when the person is unable or unwilling to learn the subtleties uh, of the various options and settings, their consequences or their implications, uh, it uh, uh, is really cringe-inducing. Uh, my name is David Orban, and uh, this is The Context. The ability to communicate uh, in convenient, uh, different ways uh, supported by uh, technology uh, is not new. It has been around uh, for at least a hundred years but uh, maybe even more uh, if we want to be uh, generous and include, uh, of course, the art uh, of uh, uh, the correspondence, uh, writing uh, letters uh, to each other. I don't want to cover that ancient art that uh, some hopefully still uh, support but uh, I want to concentrate on what is happening actually today. It used to be the case that you would stand uh, in your living room and when the uh, phone rang 30, 40 years ago, oh, it really represented something uh, that you were looking for. Um, you wouldn't know who called, uh, there was no caller ID uh, and uh, it could be, hopefully, a positive surprise. It could be also negative. You just had no way of knowing. And you answered the call and spoke to the person on the other side. Here is another big difference as well. It wasn't the case that 99% of the uh, calls received unannounced would be spam or scam. Today, the scenario is very different. When you do receive an unannounced call, yes, at least in my case, 99% of the time, it is someone trying to sell me something that I didn't ask for, or even worse, uh, they are trying to pull me in a scheme uh, that is fraudulent. The failure of the telecommunications providers to stop these uh, spam calls, uh, even the worst uh, variety, robocalls where the uh, other uh, side is just a machine uh, waiting for you to say something so that uh, uh, it can route the call to a human, is indeed um, very indicative of uh, its lack of understanding of the world and being in sync with the needs of their uh, customers. Traditional phone companies want the unplanned, unwanted call phenomenon to uh, last as long as possible. Uh, but of course, uh, they are just prolonging the unavoidable death of the phenomenon and potentially also of the platform. 
So, given that it is definitely the case that if you want to talk to me uh, on the phone in an abstract fashion, it can be whatever uh, type of platform, you should make sure that I have your number, that it is in my contact list. And maybe you should make sure that I'm available and I know what you want to talk about and I know uh, how long you are planning to talk. So what I am describing is basically what it looks like a calendar invite. It can be something less formal and it can be uh, just a couple of messages uh, on WhatsApp or Telegram or whatever other chat system to say, hey, I'd like to talk for 15 minutes about X, Y, or Z uh, tomorrow at 3. Are you available? I do like calendar invites. Uh, my family and friends um, <laughs> recognize it and, and, and laugh about it uh, because I send calendar invites to them for almost everything. Uh, I just find it convenient, uh, complete, relaxing. Managing information flow is important, our attention span as well. And that is why these tools are so useful. That is what I mean about them being relaxing. Because I can concentrate on what matters the substance of the communication, the decisions that flow from it, agreeing to go to the movies together or uh, settling uh, on a partnership or a business deal, and not having to worry about uh, the uh, details and the mechanics. So, when we take advantage of these uh, tools at their optimum, it really becomes um, something that can free up uh, your attention and uh, delegating the mundane details uh, to the platforms and the tools helps a lot. These assistants, these software agents are the substitute, literally, of what was only available a hundred or a hundred and fifty years ago uh, to the uh, ultra-rich uh, employing uh, servants, uh, for example, in London. The phenomenon of the visiting card was universal. You would send your servant to someone that you wanted to um, correspond with or to actually visit and the, the visiting card would have your name. Actually there was the detail that when the visiting card was left by the servant, uh, one corner would be um, co uh, covered, uh, would be uh, turned. And then the other person, if welcomed your potential visit, would send a servant back with his or her visiting card to your residence. You didn't need to be there. Your servant would receive the card and uh, the details would be consequently agreed upon. Elaborate, slow, complicated, with all kinds of superstructures like the turned over corner of the card, built in the system and evidently only available to very few people. Today, uh, the visiting card has been substituted by the business card. Uh, it includes uh, phone numbers and email addresses and the visiting card has died. Even the business card is on a way of going out uh, for many reasons, the most important of which 
is that electronic communications are now even more effective uh, and uh, uh, faster uh, than not juggling uh, and managing the, the, the paper cards that the business cards were. The interesting part is not necessarily or only uh, what is the support mechanism. The interesting part is what are the conventions around their use. Just like uh, in the past, uh, the way that you handed your business card uh, to the other party uh, would be important and uh, needed to be uh, understood especially in countries like uh, Japan, where there is an entire ritual uh, around them. Today, how you actually approach another person on a, a platform like uh, LinkedIn, uh, or how you start a, a chat uh, session uh, is uh, leading to a positive uh, engagement or uh, the abandonment of the session and, uh, and the closing of, uh, of the opportunity. Being able to talk to someone so directly on a call or a video conference, which is now becoming universal, I do like uh, to see the other person uh, and encourage the camera to be turned on, accepting when it cannot is wonderful and it must be handled with care. That is why knowing how to develop the tools, adopt, configure them, and how to then take advantage of the opportunity of speaking practically to anyone on the planet uh, is an opportunity that we have to treasure and we have to take advantage of. Do you want to talk to me? You are absolutely welcome and I am looking forward to be able to do that. As long as you tell me, what would you like to talk about? How long do you believe the conversation will last? Is there any intended outcome? And we can proceed from a very lightweight chat to a calendar invite and then finally to a video call wherever you are in the world. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of The Context. If you liked it, you can support it on Patreon by becoming a fan, a supporter, a sponsor or benefactor on patreon.com slash David Orban.